a while back, I made a similar video saying Starship SN11 will be 100% successful and it kind of backfired. But just as you justify all your new girlfriends, this time it's different. Before we get into the video, if you are new to this channel, do consider hitting that subscribe button to learn more interesting things about Starship, rockets and space exploration in general. Now let's get started. On March 30th, SpaceX's Starship SN11 launched in a dense fog with little to no visibility. The only part of Starship that was visible throughout the launch was its curved section and three Raptor engines. After successfully completing the ascent, the belly flop maneuver and the controlled descent, SN11 attempted the flip maneuver for landing and just blew up mid-air. Elon Musk recently shared the cause of SN11's failure, but we'll discuss it later in the video. After SN11's failure, Elon Musk went on a Twitter speedrun, writing about the iterative development process and some near-future plans up to Starship SN20. Out of the number of tweets, one of the most interesting one was the tweet regarding SN15. Elon Musk wrote that Starship SN15 will have hundreds of important changes in structure, software, avionics and the Raptor engine itself. Before jumping into Starship SN15, we need to first take a quick history lesson about the previous Starship flights and their causes of failure. If you have been closely following the Starship development, you might be aware that one of the biggest pain points for SpaceX has been their Raptor engine. The Raptor has been directly or indirectly been the cause of failure for all the high altitude flight tests so far. For Starship SN8, a lower methane header tank pressure led to a lower thrust from the Raptor which ultimately resulted in high landing velocity and the eventual rapid unscheduled disassembly. During Starship SN9's flight, one of the two Raptor engines just didn't ignite for the flip maneuver, resulting in the failure. For Starship SN10, the only Starship prototype to have landed in a single piece, the landing was not good either. The higher landing velocity for Starship SN10 was also a result of Raptor engine providing lower than expected thrust. And the story of Raptor engine leading to a failure doesn't end here. Remember Starship SN11? Yeah, that was also partially caused by a Raptor engine. Elon Musk had already said that one of the three Raptor engines for Starship SN11 was facing some problem during the ascent. The main cause of SN11's failure was a methane leak in one of the Raptor engines. So when the Raptor engine ignited for the flip maneuver, instead of igniting just the fuel in the combustion chamber, it ignited all the fuel available in Starship. And when methane undergoes combustion, it releases a lot of energy. That's the main reason why it's being used as a rocket fuel in the first place. And when you ignite liquefied methane, which is expanding rapidly, but at the same time is confined in a spherical tank, it makes a great recipe for, you guessed it, rapid unscheduled disassembly. So the point I'm trying to make is that even a small improvement in the Raptor engine can result in a drastically improved probability for Starship's landing. This information about upgrades being made in the Raptor engine coincides with the expansion of SpaceX's McGregor testing facility. This testing facility has been an integral part of SpaceX since 2003. All the engines built at SpaceX factory need to pass through this facility before being sent for installation. With the plans to launch Starship to orbit in July, SpaceX will need to ramp up the already impressive rate of Raptor engine production. We must keep in mind that the Super Heavy booster will have a lot more engines than the Starship. According to reports, Raptor engine testing is currently in the range of SN60s. These are the upgraded Raptors that Elon Musk was talking about in his tweet. Starship SN15 will also have improved internal structure and better avionics and software. These upgrades are made on the basis of huge amount of data that SpaceX has gathered in all the four Starship flights so far. The new methane leak that led to SN11's failure is also being addressed in various different ways. All these important upgrades drastically improve SN15's chances of successful landing. But this does not mean it's 100% chance of success. It is important to understand that even though with the new upgrades, the previously faced problems are most probably solved, it does not mean that SpaceX have solved all the problems in the Starship system. With the new design also comes new ways of failure. SN15 might fail for a completely bizarre reason that we can't even think of right now. The probability of such event occurring is quite low but cannot be ruled off completely. Take SN11 for example. Given that SN10 landed in a single piece, Almost no one expected SN11 to blow off mid-air. So even though SN15 has a better probability of success, it is not 100. Starship SN15 might actually be very important for SpaceX's orbital flight dreams. If they really want to attempt an orbital flight in July, 
SpaceX will need to solve this landing problem ASAP. They cannot just keep launching starships to 10 km altitude and then suddenly jump to orbital flight. Once a starship lands successfully after 10 km flight, SpaceX can then progress to higher altitudes to better understand how the aerodynamic surfaces perform at higher velocities and how well the heat shields work for the starship. As of the making of this video, SpaceX is looking to roll out Starship SN15 to the launch pad so that they can begin the ground testing before the important flight test. What are your views about Starship SN15? Will this prototype finally be the first to soft land? Let me know your views in the comment section. As always, if you like the content, do consider subscribing the channel. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.